With Simca 16, we are introducing a new analytical technique to complement the existing toolset already in Simca. The new technique is called MOCA, which is short for Multi-Block Orthogonal Component Analysis. MOCA is based on the ONPLS algorithm, in which PCA and OPLS are combined in an intricate way to produce a single model overview of a combination of data blocks. But it only works for systems where all the data blocks have the same observations but different variables. This is a situation not uncommon in many disciplines, and the traditional way to analyze such multi-block systems is by using an array of models. But with MOCA, you only need one model. Some examples of where multi-block data are common are systems biology, where biological samples are analyzed using multiple platforms. Manufacturing data, where process signals are combined by raw material composition and spectroscopy, maybe to investigate whether PAT add new or only confirming information. Sensory analysis, where expert panel data are compared to chemical analysis and consumer preference. Spectroscopy applications, where you're comparing the use of different methods on a specific system. And the questions we want to answer are of the type, how much information is common or joint between the blocks? Is there unique information in any of the blocks? Is the sample pattern consistent over all blocks? When you have more than one data set representing the same samples, MOCA will provide the answers. It is similar to the use of PCA on one block, but MOCA gives an overview of all blocks simultaneously. The example I will use is a coded anonymized process data set uh, consisting of three blocks of data. We got one called X in with seven variables, all input related, XMD, 18 variables, intermediate process variables, and the third block Y, eight variables that are out, uh, related to output. In total, we have 92 observations. So let's set up the MOCA analysis and have a look at some plots in Simca. As with all models in Simca, you start with a workset wizard. And we select the multi-block objective. On the select data page, we select all three data sets because we want to have access to all of the variables in, on the variable page. On the variables page, we need to assign the variables to different blocks. Just because they come from different data sets does not automatically mean that we're going to use that block structure. You could also have all the variables in the same data set and split into different blocks here on the variables page. However, if you have your data blocks in different data sets, it's easy to set the block assignment using the set block from data set option. We want to keep all observations, so we do nothing on the observations page. And on the finish page, we make sure that Mocha is selected in the model type box, and then AutoFit is the only available option. After the model has been fitted, we get a plot called R2 Overview. It consists of as many bars as you have blocks. In this case, we have three blocks. The bars show the cumulative R-square, or explained variation for each block. The bars are also segmented to visualize the contribution from each component. In this example, all components are green, which means that they carry joint information. The individual segments are denoted R, 2, X, J for joint, followed by a number. If there had been any unique information in any block, those components would have been colored blue and their names would have started with R, 2, X, U for unique. Let's open the model window for the MOCA model. The model window and the R2 overview display the same information. The model window has two columns for each block, and the first column show the explained variation for that component in that block, and the second column display the cumulative R-square. 
The components are divided into a section for the joint components and one for the unique components. In this example, we have six columns and the section for unique components is empty. The total model explains between 95 and 100 percent of the variation in the three blocks and we can see that the first four components have R2 values for all three blocks. These are called globally joint components. The R2 values for the joint components can also be visualized in the R2 overview plot by hovering over the individual legend items. If we move on to components 5, 6 and 7, we see both in the model window and in the R2 overview that they only explain variation in the last two blocks, XMD and Y. The final components, 8 and 9, explain some joint variation between the first two blocks, X in and XMD, that has not been explained by any of the other components. The components 5 through 9 are called locally joint components since they do not include all the blocks. If you double click on one of the segments in the R2 bars, you will open up a multi line plot displaying how the R2 for that component is distributed over the individual variables. Now let's close these windows and move on to the next plot in the ribbon, which is the score plot. The MOCA score plot is showing the average score values for the joint components. We have to look at the average position since each block has its own score space that is similar but not identical to the other blocks. How similar the different block score spaces are is indicated by the size of the points in the MOCA score scatter plot. Large points indicate that the specific observation is not behaving in the same way in all blocks. Small points indicate a conserved pattern in all blocks. Let's see if we can understand why point 1 is much bigger than two other similar points, 2 and 3. To do this, we need to create all three corresponding block scatter plot, and this has to be done manually. Instead of TJ average, we choose TJ for a specific block. Start with X in. We select the three points so that they are highlighted in all subplots. And we can now see that the individual positions of observations 1, 2 and 3 are very similar in two of the blocks, XMD and Y, but not in the X in block. This should be follow up further, but the contribution tool has not been implemented for Mocha. But we can have a look at the raw data to see if we can understand the difference between the, the three observations. So if we select the three in one of the plots, we get a trend and we double click on it. And we can notice that for X2 and X3 in that first block, observation one has more extreme values. If you instead were to make a PCA on X in only, not shown here, the three points are very close to each other in the score plot and nothing indicates that they are different. But Mocha picks up on that small change in the overall behavior of observation one. Similar to other projection models, we also provide a set of loading vectors, P, PJ or PU for joint and unique, that we can investigate in loading plots. The loadings are normalized for each block so that they can be displayed in the same plot. But let's move on to the next new visualization that comes with Mocha. The score correlation matrix is basically a correlation matrix where all intersections of the Mocha score vectors are indicated by a point. The larger the point, the stronger the correlation. 
Red color means positive correlation and blue color means negative correlation. A small gray point indicates a very weak or zero correlation. The score correlation matrix is a diagonal matrix that is subdivided into smaller squares indicated by the gray and white areas in the plot. Each square is in this case 3 by 3, since I have three blocks. Each row and column of these 3 by 3 squares is representing a specific component. So the first row of squares represent the first joint component. This plot is used as a quality check of the model. We only expect to see large points in the squares on the diagonal. Any other large points indicate some problem with the model and the data. This model looks good. With the first four squares on the diagonal clearly visible, the four globally joint components, and then we have the next five squares where only two of the blocks are participating. The locally joint component 8 is showing some strange behavior, but as always with projection models, the higher numbered components should not be overly interpreted. Start. There is only one more plot to show, and that is the score variable correlation matrix. But to show that, we need a new data set. The reason for this is that we need to have some metadata variables that is not part of any variable block. This project is a much bigger project with 33 biological plant samples on which analysis has been done using three different platforms, resulting in 281 metabolites, 2,800 protein, and 14,000 transcript variables. The MOCA analysis gave two globally joint components and four locally joint, and all blocks also had unique information explained by the model. The quality of the model was not as good as in the previous example, but what makes it interesting is that we have three metadata variables. We have run order, we have genotype, and we have internode, which is where the sample was taken. To have access to the score variable correlation matrix, we need to include the metadata variables in the work set, but not assign them to any block. On the select data page, we see that the metadata table has been included. But on the variable page, when we scroll down, we see that they have not been assigned to any block. They're still part of the model, they're called X, but no block assignment. We recognize the gray and white rows representing the MOCA components, but here the columns are the metadata variables. The first variable, run order, do not show large correlation to any of the MOCA components, but genotype and internode do. No correlation with run order is good. Genotype is positively correlated to the second joint component, and internode is negatively correlated to the first. Double clicking on one of the blue points show a scatter plot between the MOCA component and the metadata variable. This concludes the introduction video of MOCA analysis. Hope you find this addition to Simca 16 useful and keep your eyes open for more videos in the feed on the start page of Simca or search for Sartorius Stedim Data Analytics on YouTube. Thanks for watching.